Okay, let's continue. So, na-discuss ko na, di ba, tatlo yung objects ng value added tax. Number one is sale, exchange, barter, or lease of goods or ser goods or properties. The second one na diniscuss ko is yung importation of goods. The third one is sale or exchange of services. Yan. Now, uh, in the sale of uh, sale or exchange of services, same lang din sa sale of goods or properties, 12% din yung uh, value-added tax. But this time, instead of gross sales, 12% uh, siya ng gross receipts. Alam niyo na kung ano yung difference ng gross sales at gross receipts, di ba? Okay, what is sale or exchange of services? It means the performance of all kinds of services in the Philippines for others for a fee, remuneration, or consideration, including those performed or rendered by construction, service contractors, stock, real estate, commercial, customs, immigration, lessors of property, whether personal or real, warehousing services, lessors or distributors of cinematographic films, etc., etc., karagahan. Okay, so basahin nyo lang yan ha. Yan yung mga examples ng uh, sale or exchange of services. Okay? Actually, itong value-added tax, memory work ito. Okay? Or ka na ganing, ka nang matest ang imong ability to, to familiarize the terms. Ano yung included sa zero-rated, ano yung included sa sa sale of goods or, or properties, ano yung included sa sale of service. Okay? So, ano yung VAT exam? So, memory workshop. Okay, basahin nyo lang lahat ng yan. Yan yung mga service. Okay? Ano yung gross receipts? Parang gross sales lang yan. Kaya lang, iniba natin yung term. Kasi nga, services siya. Pag services, gross receipts yung ginagamit natin. So, parara na sila sa gross sales. Kanang, ang ano mang good, ang, ang services mang good, ang pinafollow natin na accounting uh, accounting rule dyan is cash, cash basis. Kasi gross receipts, meaning magkano yung nareceive mo, kaya gross receipts ang tawag. Okay? Yan yung ano. Kung baga, hindi natin kinukonsider na sold yun or may, may sale tayo hanggang hindi tayo nababayaran. So, kunyari, nag-service ka ng, nagawa ka ng, ano, ng, nag-paint ka sa bahay ng neighbor mo. So, hanggang hindi ka niya binabayaran, wala kang sale. Di ba? So, yun na na ang gross receipts. So, in, in sale or exchange of services, you also have transaction subject to zero rated rate. Meron yung zero rated sa sale of service. Number one yan, ano? Number one, ano yan? Foreign currency denominated sale. Yan yung number one. Number two is... Yung mga hindi na-mention sa number 1, yan yung number 2. Basta mga foreign currency denominated sale yan. Number 3, effectively zero rated. Yung sabi ko, zero rated ka dahil sa special laws or international agreements. Okay? Reciprocity. Okay? Principle of reciprocity. Number 4 is yung services rendered to persons engaged in international shipping. Ang kaibahan lang nila dun sa goods or, or properties, goods yun siya. E dito, service. Yun lang. Number five, services performed by subcontractors and or contractors. Ayan, processing, converter, converting, or manufacturing goods. Oh, Magkapareho lang yan dun sa kanina. Kaya lang service dito. Okay. Ang kaibahan nila is 
Ano ang kaibahan nila? Itong transport of passengers and cargo by domestic air or sea vessels from the Philippines to a foreign country. Take note that the air or sea vessel here is a domestic one. Okay? Domestic carrier, not international carrier. Tapat ang tinatransport ay passengers and cargo. Okay? Take note, air or sea, hindi lupa ha, hindi lupa. Yun yung tatandaan ninyo kasi importante yan. We will encounter later on sa ating uh, discussions kung ano yung tax imposed sa mga land carrier. Di ba? Kasi iba din yun siya. Ang, ang, ang savat, air and sea vessels lang. Okay? Air and sea carriers lang. Okay? From, from the Philippines to the foreign country. And ang tinatransport dito ay passengers and cargo. Number seven, sale of power or fuel generated through renewable sources. Oh, Check it out. Ano mga solar, okay? Yeah, may na natin explain yung next na paragraph. Now, let's go to the exam transaction. So, we're done with the objects of value added tax. Meaning, ano yung mga transactions na subject sa value added tax. Done na tayo doon. Kung wala na kayong questions, we will continue to exam transactions. So, parang wala naman kayong questions. Okay, under section 109, okay, subject to the provisions of subsection 2 hereof, the following transactions shall be exempt from the value added tax. When you say exam, hindi ka subject. Hindi 0%, hindi 12%. Exempted ka talaga. Okay? Ngayon, anong kaibahan ng zero-rated transaction at exempt transaction? Okay? Sabi ng batas, yung zero-rated, yung person doon is VAT registered person. Okay? But in exempt transactions, VAT exempt yung person. Okay? So, in zero-rated transaction, ah, uh, VAT, subject ka ng VAT, kaya lang at 0%. Okay? But in exempt transaction, you are not really subject to value added tax. You may be subject to other uh, uh, a tax other than VAT. Okay? Or business tax pa din. Okay? Now, anong ikatlo? Sa zero rated, you can claim an input VAT. Diba sabi ko kanina? You can claim an in input VAT. But in exempt transaction, you cannot claim input VAT. Okay? Hindi ka makaka-claim. Hindi ka nga VAT eh. So, paano ka makaka-claim yan? Diba? So, you cannot claim input VAT. Diba? Input VAT. Okay? Ngayon, pag-usapan natin kung ano yung mga transactions na exempt sa VAT. Number one is, ha, ito, Kailangan yung tandaan ito. Sale or importation of agricultural or marine food products in their original state. Okay, you line, you underline in their original state. Ayan, katanti yan. Kapag nagbenta ka or nag-import ka ng, ng agricultural and marine food products in their original state, livestock, and poultry of a kind generally. Okay. Mag, ano yan ha? Separate yan. Yung agricultural and marine food product, yun lang yung dapat na benta in their original state. Okay? Kasi kama, di ba? Nagsasuggest siya na, na, na iba na yung ano niya, yung, yung enumeration. Then we have livestock and poultry of a kind generally used as or yielding or producing foods for human consumption. Ang ikalawa is livestock and poultry of a kind, basta for human consumption. Exempted yan sa value added tax. And breeding stock and genetic materials, therefore. Okay, kailan mo masasabi na ang isang goods ay in their original state? O, oh, di ba? Paano malalaman na original state pa yan? Okay? 
product classified products classified under this paragraph shall be considered in their original state even if they have undergone the simple processes of preparation or preservation for the market such as freezing drying salting broiling roasting smoking or stripping so for example kung nag import ka og fish from china okay from neighboring states diba Iso bu kay import ka gikan sa Europe no murag layo apud ato oi. Eh. So kanang ta sa Selenya lang ta sa Asia, okay? Na nag-import ka og uh, kanang fish, marine marine food products. Dapat they are in original state. Pero kung for example, um uh gi-freeze nimo or gi-dry nimo sa or nagbutang kag asin para ma-preserve lang siya, it doesn't mean na nawala iyang original state. Okay? Mula yung pasabot pa na. Polished and or hushed rice, corn grits, raw sugar or raw cane sugar, and molasses, ordinary salt and copra shall be considered in their original state. Okay? Pag raw pa ang sugar or raw cane sugar. So, kung naputi na na siya, ang imuhang asukar de ra, na refined sugar na na siya, then that is no longer in original state. Kaya di naman siya raw. Refined naman siya. Okay? Okay, nag-gets nyo to. Uh, number, uh, letter B. Sale or importation of fertilizers. Okay? So kung nag-import ka fertilizer, exempted din na siya sa value-added tax. I've experienced that in the BIR, no? Kami may nag-check, Ana, kanang, ang tawag na mo sa document, Ana, is application to at trick ang tawag na mo, Ana. Ah. Authorization the I application. Ah, bala na. Authorization application to release imported goods. O, oh, muna siya at trig. So, muagi na siya sa BIR. Di ka sa customs. Magpadala sila at trig sa BIR. Okay? It is the BIR that should assess whether that particular goods, imported goods, is not subject to value-added tax. Okay? So, kung nag-import ka fertilizer or nagbaligya ka fertilizer, then that is not subject to value-added tax. Seed, seedlings, and fingerlings. Uh, seed, seedlings, and fingerlings. Kung nabaligya ka, ka ng ano, liso. Fish, prawn, livestock, and poultry feeds, including ingredients, whether locally produced or imported. So, feeds ha. Take note, feeds ni. Dili ni ka tong livestock yun. Okay. Kung livestock and poultry of a kind ka, naka sa first paragraph. Wala ka sa letter B. Okay. So, kani, feeds. Okay? And take note whether locally produced or imported. Okay? Basta used in the manufacture of finished feeds. Except specialty feeds for racehorses, fighting cocks, aquarium. Uh, uh, you, you memorize these provisions, no? Kaning letter A o letter B. Okay? Usually, nagagawas ni sila ng mga, na mga items, no? Moraisan ninyo na, haudan ninyo na. Letter C, importation of personal household effects. Ay, di ba common sense will tell you, di ba? Why would you, why would the government impose a value-added tax on your clothes? Di ba? Kaya po kayo, murag. Greedy na po kayo si government. But provided that such goods are exempt from customs duties. So, nada yung conditional para may exempt sa value-added tax. Dapat yung, yung personal effects and household effects mo, exempted dapat siya from customs duties bago siya may exempt sa value-added tax. Letter D, importation of professional instruments and implements, tools of trade. Kunyari, you are a practicing lawyer abroad and then you came back to the Philippines. Uh, you brought with you your, your notarial things and materials, your 
your whatever, your seal, etc. Diba? So, hindi yan isa subject ng, ng government sa value-added tax. Basta, you are coming to the Philippines to settle Oh, basahin nyo lang yan. Basta yung mga professional instruments and implements. Now, letter E, services subject to percentage tax. So, if the, the transaction is subject to percentage tax, then yung service, specifically yung service, then exempt transaction yan. Hindi yan subject sa value-added tax. Letter F, services by agricultural contract growers and milling for others of pala into rice corn into grits, and sugar cane into raw sugar or raw cane sugar. Okay? Medical, dental, hospital, and veterinary services. Yung letter F, related yan sa related yan dito sa letter A. Kaya lang, sa letter A, yung goods, sale or importation ng agriculture, marine food products, etc. etc. Diba? Pero dito, yung service, Yung service dito ang exempt, okay? Kaya huwag kayong malito no, kung bakit inuulit niya. Goods yun, service dito. Letter G, medical, dental, hospital, and veterinary services. Except those rendered by professionals. So kung professional ka, subject ka sa, ano, pwede tayo mag-ibot ang ano, ang daily professional. So kayo ginapasagutan yun. Okay, so... Siguro pag naakay, ano, clinic lang. Basta mo na siya. Letter H is educational services rendered by private educational institution, duly accredited by the DeepEd, CHED, TESDA, and those rendered by government educational institution. So, yung services na nire-render, yung binabayad mong tuition sa mga schools or institutions, private education institutions, na accredited ng DeepEd, CHED, tsaka TESDA, Hindi yung subject sa value added tax. Services rendered by individuals pursuant to an employer employee relationship. Why? Because hindi naman yun business, di ba? Kung nagtatrabaho ka, nagninegosyo ka ba? Hindi naman, di ba? So hindi yun kasali. Letter J, services rendered by regional or area headquarters. Established in the Philippines by multinational companies which act as supervisory. Ah, remember ito sa income taxation. Hindi din sila subject ng income tax. Kasi nga, area headquarters lang sila. They are not operating. So, wala silang income, wala silang profit. So, therefore, they are not, uh, meaning they are not engaged in trade or business. Therefore, they, hindi sila subject ng value-added tax. Kasi nga, sabi natin, yung value-added tax is for businesses lang ito. So, kung wala ka namang negosyo, huwag mo namang i-assume na liable ka ng value added tax porket nagbenta ka ng bahay. Di ba? Pwede yun. Exempted yun. Letter K, transactions which are exempt under international agreements to which the Philippines is a signatory or, or under special laws. Again, reciprocity. Okay? Exempted daw. Sabi ng sa, pag nasa international agreement or treaties to which the Philippines is a signatory na hindi Itong transaction na ito, hindi ito liable for VAT, then hindi, di ba? Letter L, sales by agricultural cooperatives duly registered with CDA to their members as well as their sale of their produce, whether it's original state or processed form to non-members. Ah, basta agricultural cooperatives, yung agri-produce nila, it doesn't matter if it is in original state or it is processed. For as long as sale siya na ginawa ng agricultural cooperatives. Their importation of direct farm inputs, machineries and equipment, including spare parts thereof, to be used directly exclusively in the production process of their produce. Because the, the state uh, encourages um, parang agricultural production, no? encouraging ng government. So, kaya hindi nila tinatax yan. Kahit sa income taxation, wala din silang income tax. If uh, if you can recall section 30 of the NIRC, nandun yung nakalista yung mga exempted from income taxation. Kasali dun yung mga 
co-ops, tsaka yung mga agricultural uh, activities, yung mga ganun, di ba? Kasi nga, yung principle behind the law dyan is that the government encourages agricultural production. Pero, nag-i-import yung government ng rice. Yan lang yung problema, no? May pumapasok na politics, no? Okay? Letter M, gross receipts from lending activities by credit or multipurpose cooperatives duly registered with the Cooperative Development Authority. So kung oh, gaya ng tagong cooperative, credit man yan or multipurpose cooperative man yan, so, so they're exempted from value-added tax. Exempted yan sila sa BAT. Letter N, sales by non-agricultural, non-electric, and non-credit Cooperatives duly registered with the CDA. So, kung hindi ka credit, hindi ka agree, basta kay registered ka sa CDA, then you are exempt from value added tax. Yan yung privilege ng cooperatives, no? Yan yung gusto nilang, ano, gusto ng, ng BIR na mawala ng exemption yung cooperatives. Yan yung fight ng mga co-ops na hindi sila, hindi mawala yung exemption nila. Kasi marami silang exemption eh. They're exempted from income tax, exempted from VAT, exempted from percentage tax. May mga exemption din sila sa local taxes, sa mga munisipyo, tsaka sa mga cities. Ang dami nilang privilege. Kaya gawa na tayo ng co-op. Okay? Gawa tayo ng co-op. No? <laughs> okay? So, so marami silang exemption. Sabi ng tapos sabi ng sabi ng ano ng Congress na ginag uh, supposedly kasi ano yung reason bakit walang tax yung co-ops kasi nga gaya ng mga agricultural uh, production in encourage ng state yung pagbuo ng cooperatives kasi itong cooperatives para iso, para ito sa mga mahihirap yung yung ano yung hindi makaka-afford ng malalaking investments yung small investors lang ba so so This is an opportunity for small investors. Uh, di ba, remember sa tagum co-op, magkano lang yung, yung capital share na dapat mong ilagay? Maging member ka na? I think 2,000 lang yata yun dati. Hindi ko alam kung nag-increase yun ngayon. So, kung ganyan, so parang in-encourage yung mahihirap na mag-invest, gumawa ng co-op para, para palaguin nila yung co-op nila para sa kanilang benefit. Ganun din siya. Pero ang nangyayari is maraming mayayaman na sumasali sa cooperatives, di ba? Yung mayayaman, ang laki ng mga investments, nilagay nila sa co-op kasi nga exempted, di ba? Exempted sila. I think pati yata sa sa 10% na na ano na 10% na final final tax on dividends. Exempted din sila doon yung mga yung mga ano members ng co-op, walang, walang tax yung share nila. So, saan ka pa, di ba? Huwag ka na sa corporation, doon ka na lang sa co-op kasi walang tax yan. Okay? Kaya, yan yung gusto ng state na gusto nilang i-tax. Kasi nga, siguro may, may napansin sila na yung mga mayayaman, pumupunta na sa co-op kasi walang tax, di ba? Feeling ko nagreklamo yung mga bangko kasi wala na mag-invest sa bangko. Wala na nag-deposit kasi napunta na sa co-ops, di ba? May, may bank na kasi, di ba? May bank na na co-op. Okay. Provided that the share capital contribution of each member does not exceed 15,000 and regardless of the aggregate capital and net surplus rateably distributed among the members. May, may caveat pala ito. Provided daw yung share capital contribution ng isang member hindi dapat sumobra ng 15,000 pesos. And regardless of the aggregate capital, and at surplus rate of... Oh, ganun ba? So, ibig sabihin, yung malaking cooperatives, for as long as hindi ka credit, hindi ka multipurpose, hindi ka agri, ayan, hindi ka electric, subject ka na pala sa VAT kapag nag-exceed na yung, yung capital contribution ng 15,000 per member. Okay, remember that, ha? Kaya pala maraming credit tsaka multi-purpose cooperatives kasi regardless of amount, exempted sila. Now, let's go to O, export sales by persons who are not but registered. Okay? Uh, ito. Remember kanina, 
sa zero rated. Sabi ko, di ba? Zero rated ka kung VAT registered person ka. Tsaka meron kang export transactions. Zero rated ang tawag sa transaction. Pero kung hindi ka naman VAT registered person, hindi ka VAT registered person, may export ka, hindi zero rated ang transaction mo. Ang transaction mo ay exempt transaction. Okay? Tandaan nyo ang kaibahan. Okay? Letter P. Ah, ito, importante. Sale of real properties not primarily held for sale to customers or held for lease in the ordinary course of trade or business. Okay? Okay. Basic na basic, no? Basic na, na, na principle natin sa VAT. Kailangan engage ka in trade or business. So therefore, kung nagbenta ka ng bahay, real property, na hindi mo naman binibenta in the ordinary course of trade or business, therefore, hindi siya subject sa value added tax. Exempted yan. Okay? Kasi nga, not primarily held for sale. Ikalawa dyan is yung real property utilized for low cost and socialized housing as defined by Republic Act Number no. 7279, otherwise known as the Urban Development and Housing Act. So, kung developer ka, you are a developer, tapos nagde-develop ka ng low-cost housing and socialized housing, basta pasok siya sa definition under Republic Act No. 7279, sabi ng batas, Okay, sabi ng batas, exempted ka sa value added tax. Okay? The third one is sale of residential lot valued at 1,500,000 pesos and below. Okay, kung lot lang. Ay. Nalito kayo, no? Ganito, i-simplify ko. Under paragraph F, P, paragraph P, Okay, saan ba yung iba? Bakit ano? Magpakita naman kayo dyan. Ito si Rosal. Baka na siyang aso. Magpakita kayo, uy. I-check kayo ng ano. Ng school. Okay, ito. O, oh, si John Ray. Ang no? sama na yung mong kuandara nga ako. Kudel mo na. <laughs> Ma'am, mulag mong good mong nai video mo ba? Ah, sige, sige. Hina yung net. Ako po, Ma'am. Si Kwan, si Butch. Uy, nawala lagi si Jai. Pagkita po na yung mga ka... Anyag dara. <laughs> okay, so, so, atong i ano ha, summarize, summarize ko tong letter P para, ano ba, para di mo malibog, okay? Nay, do opat ka properties dere, okay? Opat ka properties. Number one is real properties not held primarily for sale, okay? Ito yung first. Second is yung Real property utilized for low cost and socialized housing. Okay? Yan yung second. Makaiba yan sila. Putol-putol yan sila. Third one is residential lot. Lot lang ha. Lupa lang. Valued at 1,500,000 and below. Ang ikaapat is house and lot and other residential dwellings valued at 2,500,000 pesos and below. Okay? So, apat. May apat na properties na pinag-uusapan dito. Okay? Okay? Itong apat na properties, exempted sila from value added tax. Okay? Kung again, number one, nagbenta ka ng real property not in the ordinary course of trade or business. Meaning, casual lang nagbenta ka. Second one is, kung developer ka, nagabaligya ka o low cost and socialized housing, you are exempted from value added tax. Okay? Kasi para sa mahihirap yan. And take note that VAT is an indirect tax. 
the government that does not intend to transfer to shift the burden to to the poor, di ba? Poor na nga sila, mag-shift ka pa ng burden sa kanila, di ba? Paano naging low cost 'yun kung may iba, di ba? Third one is kung nagbenta ka ng residential lot. Tsaka yung value ng residential lot 1.5 million and below. Okay, yun siya. Kung sumobra na 'yan, ay common sense, edi subject ng VAT, di ba? Next one is house and lot. Ito, house and lot, dapat yung value ng house and lot hanggang 2.5 million lang and below. Okay? O, oh, yun siya. Okay, basahin na lang yung next na part niya. Now, let's go to lease of residential unit with a monthly rental not exceeding 15,000 pesos. So, kung, so if, you are, ano, if you are a lesser, oh, meron kang apartment, take note ha, residential. Okay? Residential yung pinag-uusapan dito. So, kung commercial na siya, oh, dili siya ma-fall on yung queue. Okay? So, if you have a residential unit na for lease, pag yung ano niya, pag yung yung monthly rent niya does not exceed 15,000 pesos, exempted yan sa value added tax. Okay? Merong ano dito, merong parang dapat nyo malaman dito. Ewan ko kung the same, ha? Sabi niya kasi, lease of a residential unit. What if, for example, you have an apartment with 10 units? O, paano kung magkaroon ng problem na ganun? 10 yung units. Ano yung interpretation natin dito? So, kung 10 units yan siya, let's say 10,000 per unit. Magkano yung 10,000 times 10. 100,000. Tama. Ah, malayo pa rin. Let's say you have, let's say, um, walang sinabi, walang sinabi kung gross, what if yung gross mag-exceed siya ng threshold, di ba? Okay. Teka, i-discover natin na Discover natin yan. Now, let's go to letter R. Seal impartation. Ay, attorney, naka, naay nakabutang. Excuse me po. Naay nakabutang dari a uh, unit refer to an apartment unit in case of apartment, house in the case of houses, per person in the case of dorms, boarding houses, and bed spaces, and per room in case of rooms for rent. Room, yung room? Yes po, murag ang unit kay sa isa ka apartment refer sa isa sa apartment unit. What if for example na ipag 3 million ang total niya? Lesser ka then then marami kang units na exceed ng 3 million pesos yung yung gross receipts mo sa lease. What is the treatment? Under the train law, ha? Kasi, kasi ang alam ko before, ang alam ko before, kailangan may dalawang requirements. Kailangan yung per unit mo na monthly must exceed 12,500 pesos and at the same time, yung total gross receipts mo umabot ng 3 million. Sobra, ng, ng, sobra siya ng 1,919,500. Yun yung threshold before. Pero ngayon, hindi ko alam kung same. Wala na kalagay, Jive? Na po. Ah, wait, basta ako na kotor niya. The threshold for the lease of residential unit is now 15,000 per month per unit. 
However, the list of residential units where the monthly rental per unit exceeds 15,000, but the aggregate of such rentals or of the lesser during the year do not exceed 3 million shall likewise be exempt from VAT. However, it shall be subjected to the 3% percentage. If ever na aggregate sa attorney, if ever, kung aggregate dapat dili ma-exceed og 3 million. Ah. Kung na-exceed ma mabak na siya. <laughs> ma subject na siya for VAT. Oh, yun di ba? So so dalawa yung requirements, dapat hindi siya nag-exceed ng 15,000 and at the same time, yung gross receipts niya in a year, does not also exceed the 3 million threshold. Okay? Okay? Kasi paano kung marami kang units, di ba? Tapos na-exceed na ng 3 million. Let's go to letter R. Sale, importation, printing, or publication of books and any newspaper, magazine, review, or bulletin which appears at regular intervals with fixed prices. Uy, malapit na tayong mag-end for subscription and sale and which is not devoted principally to the publication of paid advertisements, okay? So, let's see each other in our next session.